let's get started without any further ado. Now, as mentioned, today we'll be going with the next part. We learned about IP addresses and the two categories of IPs, public and private IPs in the last class. Today we talk about the classification. What is class A, B, C, D, and E, and what are their ranges? Okay. I think you were there in the last session as well, right? Uday Shankar. Yes, I was there. Okay, right. Right, perfect. So we're going to continue from the exact same session. Again, we left off at uh, this last slide here, understanding what public and private IPs are. Today, we talk about the classes as well. Okay. So again, as mentioned, each of these classes has its own unique range of IPs. And it's important that you have to, I mean, it's important you remember or uh, again, uh, basically you try to memorize them. Because again, whenever you look at an IP, you have to instantly figure out whether it's public or private and which class it falls under. It lets you understand where the attacks uh, sources from that categorization. Okay. So in talk about class A, the first IP starts at 0, 0, 0, 0. And class E's last IP ends at 255, 255, 255, 255. So if you notice, all the 4.3 billion IPs are divided in these five classes itself. Okay. Now on the left side, it starts with all zeros in the starting and so in the ending three octets. And on the right side, it ends in 255s. So the only thing you have to remember is these four numbers here, 127, 191, 223, and 239. Because class A starts at 0, 0, 0, 0. And it goes up to 127, 255, 255, 255. And since it's ending at 127, class B obviously starts at 128. So all the 255s cycle back to zeros. And the 127 increments by one. So class B starts at 128, 0, 0, 0. And from 128, it goes up to 191, 255, 255, 255. Since it's ending at 191, class C starts at 192. And from 192, it goes up to 223, 255, 255, 255. Since it's ending at 223, class D starts at 224. And from 224, it goes up to 239, 255, 255, 255. And since it's ending at 239, class E starts at 240. From 240, it goes up to the last IP, 255, 255, 255, 255. Okay. So the only four numbers you have to remember are 127, 191, 223 and 239. On the left side, you have all even numbers, and on the right side, you have all odd numbers. Again, in this entire class, you have some public IPs and some private IPs, right? So in class A, between 0 and 127, there's an entire range from 10, 0, 0, 0 to 10, 255, 255, 255. So this entire range of IPs is private IP. Any IP within this range can be used in your local area networks. And any IP outside this range is belonging to the ISP, Internet Service Provider, to give you a public IP internet access. Okay. And similarly in class B as well, between 191, sorry, 128 and 191, there's a small range, 172, 16, 00, to 172, 31, 255, 255. Any IP within this range is a private IP. And any IP outside this range is a public IP again. And similarly in class C as well, between 192 and 2, 23. There's a small range. 192, 168, 00 to 192, 168, 255, 255. That is the private IP range in class C. Any IP within that range is a private IP. And any IP outside that range is a public IP again. And in class D and class E, we don't have any uh, private IPs at all. All of them are public IPs itself. Okay. Now, to elaborate a bit further, if this is still not clear, Let's take the example of any certain class. So if you take the example of class A, if you notice, it starts at the first IP 0, 0, 0, 0, and goes up to 127, 255, 255, 255. Now in that entire range, there's a small private IP set from 10, 0, 0, 0 to 10, 255, 255, 255. Okay. And any IP outside that set is a public one. So from 0 up to 10, which is 9, 255, 255, 255. And after 10, which is from 11, 0, 0, 0 to 127, both of these are public IP sets. So in each class, in a similar manner, there's some private IPs and two sets of public IPs, one on each side. Okay. Is that clear, guys? Any questions up to this point? Omkar, Uday Shankar. Perfect. Now, as an exercise, what we're going to do is I'm going to write down some random IPs now. And I want you to look at these ranges and tell me which IP belongs to which class and whether they are public or private IPs, guys. Okay. 
So let me quickly write down some IPs first. Okay. Oh, I have some IPs written already. Okay. Right. <laughs> so. Oh, so I've written down some random IPs here, guys. Now, what I want you to do is look at this range of IPs from here. And now tell me which IP belongs in which class and whether it's a public or a private IP. Let me give you the answer for the first few ones and I want, want you to give the answers for the others. So looking at the first IP here, 10, 20, 30, 40. Look at the first octet, it shows 10. Now we all know 10 definitely falls between 0 and 127. So therefore, this is a class A IP. Now once you know that this is class A, you have to focus on this range of the private IP. So if any IP starts with the first octet as 10 and the remaining octets are anything from 0 to 255, then it's a private IP. Okay. For class B, for an IP to be a private IP in class B, first octet should be 172. Second octet should be between 16 and 31. The remaining two octets can be anything from 0 to 255. And for class C, first octet should be 192. Second octet should be 168. And the remaining two octets can be anything from 0 to 255. So here, first octet is 10, and the others are numbers from 0 to 255, right? So therefore, this is a private IP. Second number, 192, 165, 0 to 10. So 192 falls in class C here. So this is class C, right? This is class C. And now, is it public or private? So the first octet, 192, that seems to match. Second octet is 165. But here, for it to be a private IP, it should be 168, which means it's before the range. So it's outside the range of private IP, which means this is a public IP, right? Okay. Now, similarly, can you give me the answer for the next one? 172, 16, 0, 10. Which class and whether they're public or private? Any answers, guys, for there? Or Omkar? Class B. Class B, perfect. B for Bombay. Okay. And public or private? 172.16.0.10. Private. Perfect answer. So if you notice, the first octet is 172. That seems to match. And the second, second octet is between 16 and 31. So that is also matching. So therefore, it's a private IP. Next, 172, 35, 45, 55. The third one is, uh, sorry, second one is uh, not uh, public, right? It's private. Which one? The second, 192, 165, 0. Yeah, but if you notice, the first octet is 192. That seems to match. For an IP to be a private IP, second octet should be 168. But we have here. Okay, okay, 165. Okay, okay, sorry. Right. So, therefore, that's a hmm. public IP. Right. Moving on. Next IP. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Are you, what's wrong with my mouse? Anyways. Yeah. 
So the next IP is 172, 35, 45, 55. Any answers for this? B public. Perfect answer. Class B because the first octet is 172. And why is it public? Because the because second octet is... Second octet is 35. Yeah, 35. It's beyond 16 to 31. So therefore, it's public. Next one. Class D. In a class E, sorry, class E. Okay. okay, I've got one answer as D and one answer as E. Which one would be correct? 225, 100, 191, 200. Class E. Uh, D for Delhi. E for elephant. E for elephant, are you sure? 225. Okay, okay, sorry, huh? it is D. <laughs> okay, right, so therefore this is class D. And in class D, there are no private IPs. So therefore, this is a public IP itself. Next one. 245, 10, 20, 96. E, E for elephant. Yes, correct. And therefore, this is also a public IP. No private IPs in class D or class E. Important. Next. 192, 192, 192, 192. C. Yes, class C and public or private? Public. Perfect answer. Next one. Class A. Public, public. or private? Public. public. Perfect. Next one. Class C, public. Yes, public. Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope it's both of you answering, guys. I hope you're understanding the answers. Okay. Moving on, next one is, yeah, 172, 30, 10, 20. B, public. B and public. Private, Third, private, private, sorry, 31. Yes, this is 31. Private, right. correct. Next. Class A. Private. Private, are you sure? Yes. Yeah, it's private. Don't get confused, guys. Just checking for confidence in your answer. Next one. Class E. Yes. Public. And public. Public. Next one. Class A. Public. Yes. Class A. And public. Okay. I think that's the last one. Yes. Perfect. So correct answers, guys. Perfect answers. Now, I've shown you how to check your public and private IP in the last class. I hope you can recall. If I had to check my public IP, how do I do that? I just go to my browser and in my browser, I search for what is my IP. And you can notice I've got an IP here. 49.204.239.18. Looking at that IP now, can you tell me which class is it? 49.204.239.18. This is class A. Perfect. Public. And yes, it is a public IP, if you notice. That's what it shows here as well. How, do, how can we confirm that? Because it's not falling in the private IP range from 10, 0, 0, 0, 10, 255, 255, 255. It's outside the range, so therefore it's a public IP. And if I had to check my private IP on the other hand, how do I do that? I just open up my command from and run the command IP config. Okay. And I've got an IP here. If you notice, it shows 192.168.0.5. Looking at this IP, can you tell me which class is this? I hope it's visible. A, C, class. Yes, this is class C. Oh, my bad. Right, so if you notice, this is class C. And is it falling in the private IP range, guys? Is it a private IP or a public IP? Private. Perfect answer. If you notice, it's falling in this range here. 192, 168.00 to 192.168.255.255. So any IP within that range is a private IP itself. Okay. Now don't worry about what the subnet mask is, what this default gateway is. We'll talk about that in the upcoming session in the next class. Okay. 
But the question that arises for most of the students now is why do we have five separate classes? Okay. Why not just one single class with some public and private IPs in it? It would have made our job a lot easier, right? The reason is each network requirement might be different. So the network I use at my home here, which is uh, again capable of uh, again uh, small networks, again at my home, this is not the requirement in multinational companies. In multinational companies, you might have a requirement for connecting thousands of devices together. Okay. For such a network, my home network is not suitable. Okay, where I can only connect a few few number of devices, such as 200 or 255. Okay, so depending on each class, you have different network sizes. Okay, so class A has one network portion and three host portions. Class B has two network portions and two host portions. Class C has three network portions and one host portion. Class D and class E have all network portions itself. There are no host portions in class D and class E. So as you're going down the line, network portions are increasing in number. Class A has one network portion, class B has two network portions, class C has three network portions, class D and class E have all network portions itself. But what are these network portions and host portions and what do they signify? To understand this, let's take the example of class C first, which has three network portions and only one host portion. Okay. Now, in class C, we all know the private IP always starts at 192.168.0.0. Okay, and that's the same thing which I've written down over here. So in class C, we have three network portions and one host portion. The private IP range is from 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. To and that's the same IP which I've written down here, 192.168.0.0. Okay, the first three portions are the network portions. The last portion is the host portion. Now, I'll come to that in a bit what they are. Okay. But according to the sequence of IPs now, if this is the first IP, 0, 0. What's the next IP? 0, 1. Next IP, 0, 2. Next IP, 0, 3. Next IP, 0, 4. Next IP, 0, 5. That way, it goes all the way up to 0, 2, 5, 5. After 0, 2, 5, 5, what happens? You have 1, 0. Then 1, 1. 1, 2, 1, 3, which goes up to 1, 2, 5, 5. Okay. Now, what I mean by network and host portions is that each host portion change just indicates a change in the host. Okay, a host is nothing but an individual device. So 0 0.1 could be my router. 0 0.2 could be my smartphone. 0 0.3 could be my laptop. 0 0.4 could be my smartwatch. All of these are different, different hosts. Each host portion value is uniquely assigned to each host. But all of them still belong to the same network, the 192. 168.0. Network. So in this 192.168.0. Network, this is the first IP, the second IP, the third IP, the fourth IP, fifth IP, sixth IP. As such, you have a total of 256 IPs, including zero as well. Okay. But please note, you never assign zero and 255th IP to any device. Okay. There are again exclusions. So the only usable IPs you would have are from one to 254. Okay. But as a round figure, let's assume it's 255. So in each class C network, now we can connect a maximum of 255 devices, not more than that. Because after 0, 0255, you have one zero. And whenever there's a change in the network portion, network divides over there. What I mean by network division is only these devices now can communicate with each other. Even if you bring a device like 1.1 .1 and physically connect it in this network with the cable as well, it will still not communicate because this belongs to a different network altogether. So you cannot ping from these devices to devices of other networks, okay? Unless and until you have a router in between, okay? But that's secondary. But again, please note, devices would only communicate or hosts would only communicate when they belong to the same network, okay? When the network changes, okay? The group itself is changing and these devices cannot communicate with anyone outside their group, okay? So in each group now in class C, you can connect a maximum of only 255 devices, not more than that. Since it has only one host portion, it can range from one to 255, okay? So no matter what network you take, the one dot network, the two dot network, three dot network, in each class C network, we can only connect a maximum of 255 devices. That's the speciality of class C with three network portions and one host portion. Is that clear, everyone? So in my home network, if you remember, I was using 192.168 network itself. So in my network also, I can only communicate maximum 255 devices, not more than that. Okay. Is that clear, Omkar? Yes. And uh, 
students who there yes clear perfect now when you come to class b class b has two network portions and two host portions so in class b the private ip starts at 172 1600 okay first two portions are the network portions last two portions are the host portions so same logic again after 00 you have 01 02 03 04 -0 each of these is assigned to a unique host okay then this goes up to 0255 and after 0255 you have 10 and please note the network does not divide here because even the third octet is host portion okay so this 0255 can actually communicate with 10 okay then you have 11121314 which goes up to 1255, then 2021223, two, which goes up to 2255. Like that, the cycle keeps on repeating. And somewhere down the line, you would have 2550, 2551, 2552, 2553, 2554, 2555, 2555. Now, once both these octets are filled, then the 16 changes to 17. And whenever there's a change in the network portion, the network divides over. Okay. So all these devices now from 00, zero or 1600 to 1625525, they belong to the same network. Okay. But when the 16 changes to 17, the network divides. Okay. Again, from 1700 to 1725525, that's another network. 1800 to 1825525, another network. 1900 to 1925525, another network. Like that, it goes up to 3100 to 31255525. That's the last private IP. Now, in each network, how many devices can we connect, guys? Since you have two host portions, you can connect a maximum of 255 into 255 devices. Okay. And that's approximately 65,535. Okay. So, again, each octet is repeating 255 times. So, since you have two host portions, 255 into 255. Okay. So, these are the first 255 devices, then the next 255 devices, then the next 255 devices, then the next 255 devices. Like that, it is repeating. 255 into 255. Okay. And when you finally come to class A from 10, 0, 0, 0, all the way up to 10, 255, 255, 255, all of them belong to the same network because it has only one network portion and three host portions. So the last three octets belong to host portions. Okay. And when the 10 changes to 11, then the network divides. Okay. And in class A, you can connect a maximum of 255 into 255 into 255 devices, much more larger network compared to class B. Okay. So again, as mentioned, each class is again, depending on the network requirement. For small networks, you can go for class C. For medium-sized networks or large networks, you can go for class B or class A. Anything would work. Okay. Practically speaking, you cannot connect these many devices. You would have latency issues, but at least logically speaking, that's the purpose of each class. Okay. Now, we did leave out class D and class E. Now, all of these IPs in class D and class E do not have any host portions in them. All of them are unique IP addresses, unique public IPs. And these public IPs are reserved specifically for special organizations. Your research and development, development organizations, your military organizations, your weather forecasting services, your news telecasting services, etc., etc. All of these organizations go for class D and class E. They are not given to the general public. Okay. So that's the relevance of each class, guys, and the importance of each class. Okay. So in the upcoming sessions, in the next class, the last class for networking, we'll talk about what is subnet mask, what is DHCP protocol, how do you assign an IP address manually and automatically, what is a DNS server, what is DNS protocol. We'll talk about all this in the next session, guys. I was supposed to take this yesterday, actually, but again, students weren't available yesterday, so I had to postpone this for one day. Okay. So yeah, that's that. Any questions, any doubts up to this point? Who oh, there? Omkar. No doubt. Okay. Again, as mentioned, guys, the link is going to change from Monday. So these were the demos that we have conducted over the entire week. And again, as mentioned, please do register at the earliest so that you can resume our continuation classes. Okay. There are already two students registered. So again, even if you again, if you do join, there will be a total of four students on the batch. And we'll be continuing the batch from Monday without fail. The link will change. So only if you register, you get the link. Okay. And you can contact Durgasoft. I think they have mentioned their information in the chat box. You can contact them and get registered directly. Okay. okay. So yeah, that's that. Nothing further. We can exit the session here and connect back on Monday once you have registered, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good day. And I'll see you soon. Bye, sir. Bye, guys.